Good morning, it's Erica here for Mojo Monday. I am from me to you paper crafts. You can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram, and I also have a website, ericaedney.com. Lots of places to find me. I also have a YouTube channel for me to you paper crafts. I'm kind of everywhere. So if you're looking for tutorials on how to use our gorgeous Stampin' Up products, you might want to go and visit me. I have quite a few fun folds on there if you like that as well. So welcome this morning. Uh, let me just refresh my laptop so I can see who is here and who might be commenting. And I apologize for my hair this morning. I've got it tied back here in a little pony to get it off my face. And I'm heading to get my roots done tomorrow or Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday. Can't wait. It's time overdue. I haven't had my hair done since before I left on my vacation. So it's time. Um, Sharon, hi. Good morning. Nice of you to uh, be with me. And I really appreciate you sharing my posts. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay. So today we have a card sketch. I did post it um, so that you could prepare and perhaps um, craft along with me. This is the one that we're doing this morning. And um, it's kind of a fun little card sketch. It wasn't too difficult to prepare all the layers. You basically have your card base and it's a landscape version. You could also do it vertical. There's no reason why you can't do what we call a portrait card or a landscape card. Doesn't really matter. And um, so you have a card base and then you have your first layer. And I'll talk more about options that you can do for this card sketch. It's very versatile. Then you have another sort of strip of paper and then you've got three mats and three tiny squares. So I'm going to tell, talk to you about lots of different versions. I kind of wish I'd made um, a number of these cards just to show you the different things that you can do. But hopefully if I explain it to you, you'll get the idea. Good morning, Carolyn. Nice of you to join me. Okay, so I'm going to turn my uh, camera down. Um, this is basically um, a, a DSP card. It's using designer series paper pretty well. Um, so you can pick any of your papers that you want and you could pick a colored paper. I've chosen to use black and white because there's a package of black and white pattern paper in our annual catalog I want to point to. It's kind of overlooked and it's overlooked because it's not part of any kind of a suite. It's not recommended with a stamp set that I could see. It's just a pack of black and white paper and I always love having black and white and there's a bonus to using black and white which I'll explain to you. Um, as I turn the camera down. So let's do that now. And let's rotate this down. Here we go. And I need some lights on to get rid of some shadows. My new light is working out perfectly. It's not coming apart and falling on the floor, which is a good thing. Okay, let's have a look at my view in my laptop. Looking good. So welcome, everyone. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, it hasn't been the greatest weather. Um, hope we're waiting for some nice weather. Uh, but I really did enjoy going to sleep last night listening to the rain. I really do enjoy listening to the rain when I'm sleeping. So, um, yeah, that was kind of nice. Bear with me while I drink a little bit of coffee here. Okay, so I want to, if you have your catalog, you can turn to page, um, this, um, the designer series paper starts on page 130. And this is where you can see all the different papers. And um, what it doesn't do is it doesn't really tell you what it coordinates with. Um, when you look through the main part of the catalog and you see a stamp set, so let's take this Abigail Rose DSP, for example. Here's the suite here. So when you look at the suite, the stamp set, and everything that comes with it, it will show you the papers. But I kind of wish the papers in the back um, told you what it coordinates with. So as you're looking through the catalog, you might mark down the page number. Oh, actually, I take that back. Look at that. It's right there coordinates with 
Abigail Rose Sweet. Look at that. It's right there. My apologies. This one, too, coordinates with the Awash with In Beauty Suite. Okay, I take that back. Stampin' Up! has done a good job there. Okay, so anyway, the paper I want to show you, too. So it's kind of good to underline these. Coordinates with Butterfly Kisses Suite. Okay, the paper I want to point out is this one. The Perfectly Penciled 12 by 12 Designer Series Paper. So here it doesn't coordinate, but you can see it being used on page 76, okay? So it doesn't coordinate with Sweet, but look at all the different floral patterns. And then on the back, they've either got leaf patterns or stripes or geometrics or dots or other little flowers. It's really a cool um, paper. And the thing I want to point out to you is that when you get like a black and white paper, if I go to my, um, it was just before that page, if I go here to this page here, you've got all of your coloring options. So you've got your blending brushes, you can do some Versamark with some embossing powders, you can use little ink spots, you can use spritzers, uh, you can use your water painters. Um, on this kind of paper, I wouldn't apply water per se, but you could do your blending brushes or you could do even the little sponge daubers. So what I'm trying to say is that with black and white paper, you can color it, okay? So I'll just flip through the papers here. I've already um, gone into this package here, but I'll show you. Maybe I'll start at the back. So you've got this really sweet floral with some stripes on the back. You've got these polka dots, and then you've got more floral. So these are very easy to color. You could use your watercolor pencils as well on here, color them, or you could take your blending brushes and just apply, or your sponge daubers, just apply a little bit of green on the leaves, a little bit of color on the flowers. Here you've got, this is a really sweet piece here. And then you've got lovely leaves on here. So you could basically, you know, you could sponge this whole thing on here. Um, another cool idea would be to take the whole ink pad and just blot it on the paper. You'll get lines in there, but it might make an interesting pattern. You've got these patterns here. And then look at these gorgeous flowers. So you could take your time to color these. Now you could use your blends as well, but keep in mind that with blends, it's going to bleed to the other side, which of course, if you're going to use this side anyway, it doesn't matter. I love this piece be a good Halloween piece and then you've got these gorgeous these are freesias they all run in one direction then you've got some beautiful leaves on here or sprigs wildflowers I would consider those then you've got these okay now I'm repeating the patterns here okay so a great great uh, pattern paper okay and you could do lots of coloring with that all right, let's take a look at what I'm looking at for my sketch. I have a four by five and a quarter inch piece of paper for the inside, and I've taken a piece of the patterned paper, extra piece, and I'm going to put something on the left side there, or you could do it on the right. Okay, now here are some options. So I've cut all my pieces. So when I cut this piece, let me take these apart. When I cut this strip of paper, I kept the pattern together. Okay, so you can piece it together like that. So you could choose to keep the squares all in one direction. Okay, and then I've got my layers here. Okay, here's my card base. I chose to do basic black. So here's my basic black uh, card base. Now here's some options. You could... And when you start, you know, putting your papers together, this is how you, you can design it and see what you like better. I, just as an example, I decided to take four by five and a quarter inch piece of paper and emboss it with the, my favorite, you all know this, my favorite brick and mortar embossing folder. It's my favorite. And remember with this, you can also take your ink pad and you can um, ink it up ink up the side that's going to go on the top and so you can change the color on that so I could use this on the back okay then it called for 
let's pull out my sketch here okay so then it called for this piece here this is two inches by five inches wide so an option is you could use a piece of the designer series paper on the back there like that okay and then you would build your squares on top of that or you could flip it to the same pattern um, and then put these on top so this would still work okay you could do that um or this piece could have been a full pattern piece i think i cut a pattern piece here somewhere did i cut it and use it all oh no here it is so instead of an embossed piece you could do this piece on top or this on top then you could have uh, this on top and again you could use I only used one piece of the pattern paper on both sides but you could bring in any of the other patterns on there so you could do even something like this and flip it over these pieces could match the back there's just any number of things that you can do okay so you kind of when you're designing you decide what you prefer um, so you could do this and then add the flowers okay or I do really like the embossed background okay so I think I'm going to stick with the embossed background here with the black on top like that okay uh, let's see now in here this is not quite centered on the card it's a little bit higher but you could center it um, but this allows you to maybe you could put a greeting down below. Um, now, if you decide to um, use um, an embossing folder, what I would recommend is that you stamp the greeting first and then you run it through the embossing folder because you can't stamp on top of it once it's embossed. But you could do that or you could run a bit of ribbon around it as well. Okay, so um, ribbon might be a good idea. Now I have this really cool gingham, black gingham ribbon, which is really cool. So if you have any black ribbon, and remember, I'm doing black and white, but you know, you could do all different colors for this. This is really, really um, versatile. Okay, so let's see who else has joined. Angela, good morning. Nice to see you or hear you or see your typing. <laughs> I really prefer Zoom sessions just because then you can kind of see people face to face, but that's okay. We're going to do, I do Facebook um, lives a lot, but I'm so happy you've joined me. So I could choose to put a little bit of this gingham across here. Um, and I might do that. Let's just uh, design this before I put it all together I thought I would do this and then I thought I would do these little pieces across it okay so maybe the first thing I'm going to do is put these little squares together now in the sketch they've shown you one where they've turned it so it's become um, a triangle um, so that's kind of cool as well but with this the flowers I, I did cut it so that the flowers kind of match together so you have a continuous pattern. So I might just keep it all square. So let's start gluing these on. Now I'm definitely using Tombow when I glue these because I have room to, um, I'm just gonna do a bit of scribble on here and then I can um, move these around if I need to. That's my third one, perfect. Are any of you making this card 
with me or are you going to do one later? All right, so there's my three pieces right there. Okay, and then I've got this piece. It's going to go on top. Okay, and then I might put the ribbon. Although I'm not sure I like, what do you guys think? I'm not sure I like this ribbon with this pattern. Um... I wonder if a striped piece would be more fun. Let's just cut a piece of this striped piece and see if this um, makes a difference. Okay, so this piece is cut two by five. So I'm going to do my typical four by, oh, how, what, how do I want my stripes? I think I want them going across or up and down. I think up and down. So let's cut this to let's see, let's cut this down to five, no, to five and a quarter because the other pieces I can use as a panel. So five and a quarter, then I'm going to cut this to two inches. And then I'm going to just do it to five. Take off that little piece. Okay, let's look how beautiful. I love stripes. So let's see if this looks better. So if you were to um, cut your paper so that you're going to make two cards, pick two different sheets of designer series paper, and then this way you can keep mixing and matching. Okay, well, these are done already, so I won't be flipping those around, but we could do, so I think I like this better. I could do this at the bottom. Okay. So let's do that. For, let's do the ribbon on here first. So how I do my ribbon is I'm just going to grab my tape runner and put a little bit of tape just so that ribbon will stick to that. Let's put this across here like this. The bricks help keep your ribbon straight. Okay, so that's on there pretty secure. And then let's go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to use my Tombow again. This on here nice and straight. Okay. Yes, you thought I needed a different pattern, Angela. Yeah, so I've done that. Okay, so now we're going to put this one on here. And then we're going to put our squares on. So let's just use my tape runner. Now, here's a question. I think maybe we should pop these up on dimensionals. See, that's coming together. And then I was going to do 
I'm going to do a bow for the bottom. Or you could do a greeting on top. This ribbon ties a beautiful bow. Yeah, it does a spectacular bow. Now, when I do my bow, I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm going to lift the ribbon up and stick a glue dot underneath it just to keep it on the paper. And let's grab another glue dot. And put this on here like that and then let's put our ribbon on top of that and then yeah I think I'm going to keep these square so maybe we'll put these up on dimensionals so one two three so you might want to check out my youtube channel i posted um a few facebook lives that i did um and because i was getting ready for vacation i didn't have time to um to post them but they're up now okay so let's figure out I am just going to put a little um, what was this this was five inches wide so two and a half so here's two and a half and I'm just going to put a little, oh my goodness, where's my pencil? Here it is. I'm just going to put a little pencil mark here. Just so I can see where my, oh my goodness, I hope I haven't mixed, this is my centerpiece right here. Just so I can see where to center this. There we go. This one's going to go here, and this one here. There we go. Okay, there is your card this morning. Okay, so for the inside, I am going to glue this piece just on the side here. And then I'll trim it. There we go. And we can glue this on the inside. And then you can decide on any greeting that you need. Sometimes it's good to have blank cards lying around just in case you need a thank you or a, or a happy birthday or whatever the occasion. So there's your card. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a few, you know, you could add some uh, pearls on here would look nice. Or you could add some rhinestones. 
This is where you could add your little bit of pop of color. You know, you could add some color to this if you wanted to. Um, any number of things that you can do. Okay, thanks, Carolyn. So thank you, ladies, for joining this morning. I hope you'll make this sketch. I will post this in a comment so you can see the card. And um, I wish you all a really super day. And we will see you hopefully again on Thursday night. I've got Case the Caddy coming up on Thursday night. So thank you, ladies. If you have any questions about any of the supplies that I use, you can let me know. Typically in the description, I am putting a link to a shopping cart so that you can um, purchase what I've got. You can also edit that shopping cart so you can delete things you already have or add some other things that you need. And it goes directly to my online store. Thank you, ladies. Bye for now.